times. Ralph Hightower. Okay, so it's sorry. Um, so I'm going to call the meeting to order at 7:02. This is Rebecca Nash, um, uh, Ellen for roll call. Um, I know Carol and Ralph and John have said they're here. Also Beth, Cheryl, myself, and Gail and Mary. So we're just missing Brian and Barbara. Yes. Okay. If if you're all set, Ellen, I'm going to continue on. Um, no citizens' comments, obviously. Um, the for people who got a chance to review the minutes from our April 20th meeting, um, wondering if we could get a motion to approve those minutes. So moved, oh, so moved by John. Or second. And and yeah, and seconded by Carol. Um, any discussion about them? Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, so minutes approved. Um, Gail, any correspondence? Uh, no, none. Okay, I'm great. Just, I'm trying um, Carol, to, oh. I'm trying to share the uh, the agenda. Let's see if I can get to it. Um. Okay. Um, while she's doing that, Carol, anything from the treasurer's report? No, it was uh, very simple and straightforward. Whoops, I'm gone. Simple and straightforward thing. Um, there were small expenses and just a donation as income. So really, there was not a whole lot of movement, but it balanced. Okay. Sounds good. Any questions for Cheryl, or for Carol on the the um, budget as present or the treasurer's report? This is Beth. Um, I was just. It's because um, because we've been closed that there's you know no income from copiers and things like that. Is that right? Right. I, that's my understanding. The staff doesn't get charged to make copies. That's, okay. that's correct. So there's no opportunity for income from there. Gotcha. Thank you. Okay, Gil, you're ready to give your report? Okay. Um, well, I guess foremost on my mind is working on a reopening plan. Uh, although we have no dates yet, the library community is guiding the plan for reopening. <clears throat> Lion libraries are meeting weekly to plan and discuss what it will look like. The State Library has issued guidelines to a phased approach for libraries to consider and has presented these guidelines to the Reopen Connecticut Task Force as well as the, as the governor. And I understand that there have been several conversations um, from CLA and the Legislative Committee regarding um, reopening libraries and what that will look like. <clears throat> the task force seemed pleased to have the information, information using the state guidelines and information from the Lion Group, I put together a draft plan that addresses the issues specific to our library. Hopefully you've all had a chance to look at the draft, which is included in the packet. There were four phases to the plan, but again, no time frame has been established. Phase one is where we are now with a complete closure, no curbside service, staff working from home, or limited staff working in the building. In phase two, we will provide curbside service, hold for materials, will be filled from our in-house collection only, 
not coming from other lion libraries. Therefore, collect the items and check them out to a patron. In discussions today, libraries are going to be limiting patrons to five items at a time. Phase three is a limited opening with restrictions, and phase four is complete opening. I'll be working on temporary policies to put in place for phase two and three. Public Works has measured and will install plexiglass shields around both circulation desks in preparation for the opening. We have rearranged furniture and will be removing some chairs to, to maintain social distancing in the building for phase three. We will also reduce the number of computer terminals available for the same reason. I would like the Commission's feedback and approval of the plan, which I will then share with Human Resources and the Mayor. At this week's Lion meeting, three libraries reported they tentatively planned to start curbside on May 20th, based on information they received from their health director. Several more are planning to begin curbside on June 1st. Their staff will begin working in the building again prior to starting curbside service. The mayor will most likely have the final say in what we do, probably in conjunction with the governor and legislative health district. If we present a workable plan for the library, it may help him make a decision. I did um, bump into his assistant today at the post office and I asked her if there was any, any talk of reopening. And she said that the, he was thinking about bringing staff back on June 1st. When he says bringing staff back, I'm not sure if it's just the union staff or if that will include my, my part-time staff. Um, hopefully we'll get more information this week. On strategic plan, we've been work, working on the updated logo and tagline for the library. We chose six slightly different versions that will give us some flexibility for using them. And I've attached a document with the six options and how it could be used for our letterhead. The planning committee met last week to finish up their work on the plan. Uh, looking at a time frame and responsibility for who's doing what. The Library Commission has a role to play in completing many of the actions which I've listed below. Um, many of them deal with advocacy for the library and many of them are ongoing and not a one-time activity. The dates provide a guideline for at least beginning the action. The Library Commission and the Friends need to continually advocate for the library, whether it is to let a neighbor or a new resident know something about the library, promote our programs and activities on social media, or let town officials know about the value the library and its staff provide to the community. And I've listed the things here that are specific to the commission, the friends, some of them involve staff as well. So for May 2020, um, I'm asking that you consider the updated logo that reflects what the library does and approve a consistent tagline that we'd like to use with that logo. Um, by June 2020, we're asking um, supporters to continue, continually push information out. When you see a post on Facebook, like it, share it, tell your friends about it, that kind of thing. Um, spring of 2020 is to advocate for adequate staffing during the budget season. And <clears throat> in my talk with the Finance Committee, that, that was something we did this year something that we need to do, do for every budget season. 
advocate for the adequate staffing. I did, I will say some dates I ended up pushing out because of the, um, what the pandemic has done and, and the situation that we're in right now. Um, winter 2021, I'm asking for help and promotion of an activity, um, provide promotional gear to identify lively representatives at town events. This, this will involve funding, something we would probably ask the friends to do. Uh, we're thinking along the lines of t-shirts to be with events or hats. Um, maybe we want to do um, a tumbler with the, with the logo that we would give out to new homeowners, that kind of thing. Um, also fall 2021, just in general, advocating for proper funding for the library. This goes beyond staffing, but proper funding overall. And then winter 22, 2022, we may want to look at investigating the possibility of an addition of the library. Um, summer 2022, look at advocating staff to open additional hours. This was something I pushed off again because of the pandemic. Um, and then asking under all for everyone's help would be, again, advocacy, promoting the expanded collection, book collection available through Lion, and participating in appropriate activities at the library sponsors. <clears throat> under, under programming, uh, the virtual programs seem to be catching on with our patrons. Stacy's had a good response to her, her programs with a live attendance of 267 total for all of her programs, including story times, pop-up stories, and the Read Aloud book for older children. There have been over 3,000 views of her virtual book club when she read aloud The Doc is Rising and the pop-up stories. She did these programs live on Facebook and they remain available for later viewing. On the adult program programs, participation for this month was Cookbook Club, we had seven. Uh, Stuck Discussion had seven. President's Book Discussion had seven. The Wildlife Series on Eagles had 16. And last Friday's talk on bears in Connecticut had 15. Um, so we are getting attendance at, at the virtual programs. Under library news, uh, we received our C card reimbursement from the State Library in the amount of $800, which is what we received last year. And the Lions Club donated $500 which will be used for large print and audio books. Um, Beth, you are right in that we're not um, adding to our copy receipts because, and fax receipts because the library is closed. And it looks like we will be closed for the remainder of the fiscal year. So um, the only additional income we will receive at this point would be any donations that come in and I need to submit the special fund budget for the commission to approve next month. And I do expect our numbers will be lower. And that's my report. Um, we can leave the, the uh, reopening plan to discuss under new business. Great, thank you, Gail. Anyone have any questions for Gail? I do. Um, Gail, when you go to the library, Connecticut Library, it's like they had a survey of, um, I think, around 40 of the libraries, mm -hmm. the results of that survey. I noticed a lot of them are planning on partially opening the phase two that you're talking about, either May 20th, um, May 25th, July 1st, 
they're, they're all, you know, soon. Yep. What, what do you expect the mayor is going to do as far as allowing us to open? Well, if I have any say in it, and I don't know if I do, <laughs> but I, I would like to recommend that we at least start curbside on June right. 1st, which is two weeks from today. Right. But to do that, um, we need to have staff back. We need to at least have the union staff back. And I need them back before June 1st because we have to train them on the new protocols. So when are you going to talk to the mayor? After the uh, June 1st. After, uh, after the, I, I wanted the commission to see the plan first. And then um, I'm going to set up a meeting with the mayor and John Steinhoff. Um, I'll probably call them tomorrow and see. I, I've actually asked John to come over to the library and look at what we've done. Um, he was talking about having Stacy work in the back room. And we, that doesn't really work for us. And there is a way that we can make it safe for her to work in the children's room. And I want, I want him to look at that. And he said, sure, he'd be happy to come over. So he's open to the idea. Okay, are you, the only question I had about the plan is, are you comfortable with the 72 hour delay in returning books to the collection? I think I am. Um, that seems to be what the majority of the people are doing. Right. Um, some are going a whole week. Um, and some are only going 36 hours. But 72 hours seems to be um, the, the, time, the time frame for the virus to die on, on a book cover. Yep. This is Beth, I have a question. Okay. Um, the, the first one was for the protective gear and all that stuff. Is, are, that, are those things coming from the town or is that gonna, do that, does that have to come out of the library budget? I think it will- For protective probably, gear and- It will that. probably come out of my budget. I did, um, I contacted Dime Bank last week I contacted their foundation to see if they would consider um, a, a grant to pay for the um, protective gear to uh -huh. not in my budget. And their priority right now is food for people who are in need of food and your know, basic essentials. So they would not entertain that at this time. Um, I. I looked at Liberty Bank Foundation and we wouldn't see anything from them until September. And I thought that might be a little late. So I, I you know, I probably will not go, go to Liberty Bank. Um, I, don't, I don't know what the town, um, again, until I talk with the mayor, I won't know what be willing to supply for us. I have bought some masks because they were available. And I know the town is paying for the shields. Um, we do have a supply of gloves. We're probably gonna need more. We have um, hand sanitizer that works in a dispenser. We have two of them at each library. We have lots of sanitizer. I'd like to get a couple more dispensers to put around the library. And those right now are very hard to get. Everywhere I've looked, they've been back ordered. And we're looking at the keyboard covers um, as something to help um, keep the keyboards clean and be able to clean them after each use. Thank you. So, Gail, before we get further into the, um, the reopening plan, 
Do we want to just, you know, keeping with the agenda, just do the committee reports yeah, real that's quick? Fine. Yep. Yep. Okay. Um, John, do you have anything on the friends, or does anyone have anything on the friends? Um, not really. They they had a they have a working group that they put together. They haven't had a full membership meeting, but I was unable uh, to attend because I had another Zoom meeting with the um, historical uh, group. So. I have nothing to report. But they're, they're, okay. They can't do anything. Um, they can't work in the bookseller. They, you know, it's very difficult. Yeah. Well, thanks. <laughs> you know, um, strategic planning committee. Um, Gail did do a summary about that. Um, I also, I, you know, we've, we've finished up. I just really wanted to, I mean, John, thank you for being on it, but Gail, thank you for the unbelievable amount of work you did to sort of pull that all together. It's, I, I really don't know how Gail did it, but she was pretty amazing because we, we were a very talkative group, um, but we were all over the place. And, and, you know, there are a lot of great ideas and somehow she likes funneled them into something very cohesive and, and is really making it happen. So, so thank you for that. Awesome. And John, did you have anything you wanted to add as well? No, I'll, I'll second that. She did a great job. We've got a great document to, to be working with. We just have to make yeah, sure. And it's exciting. <laughs> Sorry. I was just going to say it's really exciting that so much of it's already started and that, you know, like as a commission, we, we know the things that we can start doing and, and the fact that Gail has already really jumped in, you know, and, and is making things happen and moving forward too, which is wonderful. So thank you. Well, one, um, one thing, excuse me, one thing I want to add is uh, books and more will be coming up for the holidays. Uh, there probably won't be more. It's going to be kind of difficult to get um, sponsors and gifts from the local businesses because of the pandemic. But so I think there may be a change in form for the books and more, but the friends will be working on that. Thank you. Yeah, I hadn't even thought about how much harder that would be. Thank you very much. Even even um, the, uh, the big book sale in September, you know, that's not going to be able to happen either. Hmm. Wow. Okay, well, any old business, you know? when times were fun <laughs> okay um new business okay so jumping into the the reopening plan i'll make a motion to approve the reopening plan second i, I was just question. wondering before go so ahead you should have a motion in a second so we can properly discuss it how can you approve it if you haven't discussed it? Second. There has to be a motion on the on the floor to discuss. So I made gotcha. a motion to approve it. I would like to hear a second. Um, Ralph seconded. All right. So so John has made a motion um, to approve the plan that Gail has presented. Ralph seconded it, and now let's discuss it, and then we can vote after the discussion. Right. I think, I think if you look at this plan and compare it to the um, 48 other towns in the state that uh, have submitted what they're going to be doing, this is um, basically identical to what most of the towns are doing. It's a, it's a great plan and it follows the uh, state library uh, group and their recommendations for plans. So I think we should approve it. I think the plan ahead, is Charles. solid. I, I'm sorry. I think the plan is really good, and I don't have any issues with the plan. I was just wondering, Mary, maybe you can answer this. Okay. Um, I know there is a public discussion on the on June 1st about the budget for next year for Ledger itself. Yes. Um, I was wondering if you um, have any insight as far. I know. I'm sure there'll be a lot of cutbacks because the revenue has been so much reduced. Has there been any talk on the town council about 
um, the potential of not opening one of the libraries, reopening one of the libraries? Um, the town council canceled the meeting last week and um, the finance committee also uh, canceled uh, last week for lack of a quorum. So the finance committee is meeting on Wednesday. But again, um, since we're all kind of confined, I have not heard anything, but I do plan to uh, listen in on the finance committee um, this Wednesday. But no, I have not okay. heard anything. Okay, okay, thank you. I just I thought I had read one someplace where um, one town was not going to open up some of the branches of their libraries, and I was just wondering if um, anything like that was going to happen here. I don't thank know. You, though. I don't know. Uh, this is Ralph. I just have a question concerning the uh, PPE, and I was wondering, has there been any uh, thought that the town should just open up a, a line item for COVID-19 expenses and do uh, centralized purchasing for PPE for the entire town? They, they actually have done that. Um, there, there is a new account. Um, if we if we order anything that's uh, COVID related, we're supposed to use that new account number, and within our own budget, we are supposed to transfer the money into that account for our budget. And I believe um, the plan is to um, use that for um, going after the, the grant money that's going to become available. I guess the thing about that is uh, the uh, departments, their budgets are bare bones mm -hmm. and, they, and, and COVID-19 was not budgeted. Mm -hmm. This is clearly an exception. And so why not just have the town take care of the expense, et cetera, leave our budget of all the departments alone, okay? Because all you're doing is, you know, robbing Peter. Well, I know, it's rhetorical, don't worry I about it. I know, <laughs> and, 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 we, and we've been kind of issued a semi-spending um, freeze for non-essentials. So I think that that's what they're thinking, really we get the money to cover it. Um, things that we're not buying that are in our budget would go into this new account. Mm -hmm. hmm. This is Beth. Carol, um, did you have a question? Oh, go ahead. Um, I just go was ahead, curious. Beth. Yeah, um, what phase, um, in what phase would um, borrowing from other um, Lion libraries come back? Well, um, phase three? We, that is still up in the air. We're still discussing it. Um, it depends on how things go, what um, in terms of uh, reopening on a limited basis. The way they, they've been talking, it's and and some of it may become library by library, but but um, many of them were saying to at least initially fill fill in house only, and even um, when we do open in phase three, we may start out with just our own holds. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. I have a logistical question. It's, I mean, it's very simplistic, but, you know, so if you're holding books for 72 hours, you know, do you mm -hmm. just keep, you know, obviously some will rotate in and some will rotate out. Are they in different places or just different, so, so just near each other? But here's, here's my thought. When, when somebody walks in or um, if books come in the bookshop, we're going to have a book cut in the foyer at Bill Library, probably at Gale Ferry as well. At, at Bill Library, when that cut fills up, it's going to get wheeled into the meeting room. 
and it, it will have a day on it and it will stay there until that 72 hours is up. Um, then we'll put another book cut out and do the same thing. Okay. And if that makes sense, if we end up um, running out of book cuts, <laughs> which we may well do, uh, the books will get loaded in, into bins in the meeting room until until we can check them in. And are you guys using the meeting room while these books are stored there, or no? No. Good. Well, we're, okay. we're not anticipating any live programs until phase four. Um, well, libraries have basically said all programs until next year are canceled in the house. Okay, great. We're a little more um, strapped for space at Gales Ferry because we don't want to be moving things up and downstairs to their meeting room down there. So we'll probably try to um, keep them behind the circulation desk until we can check them in. And, and this might be a slightly ignorant question, but th that's okay, right? It's not like virus jumps off books and onto other things. Like it, just being near them is okay as long as you're not touching them, right? Not, hand not handling them, basically. Okay. And then yeah, if sure. we do, we'd have gloves on. Okay. Any other questions? I just think you guys have been doing a great job in this crazy phase one. So thank you. A lot of second that. Sorry, Carol, go ahead. Oh, I just said there's a lot of detail to what they put together. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> a lot to think about. Uh, again, thank you for putting this together. And um, so we have the motion. Um, all in favor of the the plan that we discussed, say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Okay. the The plan passes. And again, Gail, thank you very, very much. You're welcome. Thank you. Um, all right. So you want to share some logos with us? Okay, so um, Stacy, Elaine, Lisa, and I looked at several um, different logos. We basically used our Canva program, mm -hmm. and let's see. Let me let me find where I have it. Where did I put it? Um, it's a gap at the end. Keep going down. It's at the yeah. It's at the very end. Go to the next page. Yeah, yeah it's it's exactly. not on the the town one, so I have to go back and look at the one I sent out. Hold on. Okay. You have to open it and then share it. Okay. Um. Be with me, I'm getting to it. Okay. Okay, so um, we came up with some half tree designs. The, the idea behind the slightly different versions is there may be 
different instances where one version works better than another. So this has the uh, the the blue and the gray coloring beneath the half tree with Legend Public Library spelled out. The next one we tried the the initials the LPL um, same basically design. Then we went with um, Legend Public Library without the coloring below it. Again, just another version. Then we have the full tree with a blue circle around it. Legend Public Library spelled out and the tagline, learn, discover, create, and connect, which is on all of them. Um, here we are without the blue circle around it. <clears throat> just to give you our thoughts, our thinking on, on the tree design, the leaves, um, we like the idea of the tree in the old logo representing the legend oak. So we kept with the idea of a tree, also a tree of knowledge. And each of the leaves would be representative of all the services that we provide. We have the book underneath and then the tagline, learn, discover, create, and connect. Um, the next one has the tagline with a blue background behind it. Again, depending on the situation that we use it, we might have it on a flyer, we might want a little color on the flyer, we might not want color, which is where the plain one would come in. Um, and then I put together a letterhead using the logo. Um, we've got the tree in the left, top left, with the tagline below, the, the blue and the blue Legend Public Library represents the colors that we've chosen for our library with the gray um, address and the gray um, footer showing both libraries with the street address. And then playing around, I tried it with a transparency on the page. So these are the ideas that we had come up with. Those are really fun. Are you thinking of using several of those or selecting from those to be consistent? There are different situations that you may want to use one versus the other. For example, I was playing around with a um, um, business card idea mm -hmm. and I used the half tree. And I, I believe it was this half tree here and I put my information over here on the right. I like so still got the logo, but I have it in a different form. Mm -hmm. I would, if you're going to use more than one, and, and I see no problem with that. I like the first one with the, the blue and the gray. Mm -hmm. but, and and it, there are times you might want something centered and that makes sense, but I would use the same typeface in all of them. Yes. But one of them is a little bit, yeah, the, some of them are a little different. Yes. It's a different, it looks like a different typeface. Maybe it's just the size is different. I think it's the size because we, we will. Um, I think sometimes when you put it in bold, it looks different. We were playing with a, a I think it was a real, real thin typeface that we all liked. And we were trying to use that on, on all of them. Yeah, I think Rebecca, you're right that it, if that was you, that that was, um, yes. But it was in bold, and I really like it when it's Ledger Public Library in bold, and the other not in bold. I think that it's a nicer looking typeface that way. Mm -hmm. and I like it to say Ledger Public Library. I don't, rather than the initials, for instance. Yeah, I kind of I was curious about that too. Like, when would be the situation that you would use LPL, and does that actually undermine the brand by? Not yeah. being the name. We were kind of playing around with that. I don't think that was a favorite of any of ours, but um, looking at what some of the other libraries have done, for example, Stonington Free Library, their logo is 
F L L S F L. And so we thought, well, let's try it and see. I I personally like having it spelled out. You know for sure what it is. Yep. Mm -hmm. I I agree with that. This is Beth. I also kind of like the the one um, that. Um, sorry, that's my cat in the background. Um, the next page that didn't have the blue. Just to be, I'm not sure about um, people's um, eyesight. That would be that one there. This one. Mm -hmm. It's like the first one, but without the colored band. Correct. Correct. Right. And that would be appropriate for little things, like you were saying, business cards or something, so that they wouldn't be so busy. Right, because it's a smaller space. Right. But usually, the big one, uh, the first one for newsletter and so forth. So let me ask a logistical question. So, I mean, this is uh, like the, the fact that it's multicolor, which I, I love, mm -hmm. but how does that affect printing of letterhead or brochures or anything like that? Does that impact? So with the letterhead, um, we, I do that right from my computer onto a printer. So getting the color is, is not a big deal. You know, we have color printers. Okay. In a case of, if I was still doing the newsletter, um, well, at, at the end, they were giving us a colored, uh, colored icons, but um, if it were black and white, we'd probably have to go to a, something that worked with the black, you know, black text, not, not the colored text. Yeah, I think we should just, I mean, I think it's great and I, I really do love it. I do think we should probably, you know, just explore or you get to look at just a grayscale version of it to make sure if you ever have to do it as a black and white, how that just to make sure it would still that the tree would look okay, you know, I mean, just sort of just, just look at it, just play around with it a little bit just to make sure. And then the other thing I was going to say is, I mean, I just visualize how this if you you know talking about t-shirts or things that would recognize think about how this would look on a shirt and i mean I, I think it could look great so but you know just sort of you know make sure you sort of consider those things before you you know pick it completely well that's kind of why we had the different versions too because as you say like a t-shirt you probably don't want the, the blue circle you might want just the plain tree with the words underneath I don't know, I'm thinking the blue circle sort of, you know, the um, the t-shirts that just sort of have the thing over sort of, I don't know, your your heart, I guess, um, like, a, you know, a smaller sort of thing on the front, you know, okay. that could be really fun. Okay. Uh -huh. I, but, I know it's not yeah. big and flashy, but, you know. I'm thinking you <laughs> on the front. Yeah, okay, I see what you're saying. I, I agree with Rebecca about that. The... Um, the grayscale issue, you wouldn't want to use that first one with the, the bands, I think, with the, the gray and blue bands. If no. you were doing black and white, you would want to use the one that's just like that, but without that extra color. This Green one would probably work fine. But bands around your wording are always messy in, in grayscale, harder to read. Has there been any thought to just make a uh, whatever uh, logo uh, that we that's being selected that you just make one that is uh, the outline in black so it could go on anything and that would be standard for that particular purpose we we did look at a tree um, outline it's in the vein of the old um, logo of the uh, oak tree and that was one that we somewhat eliminated early on. We liked the detail of having the leaves. And I don't have a problem with that, but when you, why, why try to adjust for the grayscale when what you can do is, there's gonna be times when you're going to have it black and white and you just make one up that um, is consistent with the logo you have in color. Just to use the yeah. ah. Yes. 
So just do the outline of the tree without the leaves. Outline of the leaves too, right? Yeah, I mean, I, I think that you have to work out the details, but all I'm saying is let's not try to uh, 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 look at this and say, okay, what would this look like uh, on a grayscale? Why don't we just make it black and white? And when we need to use a black and white one, then we will. You know, it's, it's Absolutely. one of the things. Absolutely, no, I agree. And that's sort of what I meant was to just the, before we pick this as like, this is what we're going to always use, let's look at it and just make sure that when it is black and white, that it doesn't look ridiculous. I don't think it will, but sometimes things do. You know, so. Meanwhile, the colors are gorgeous. Say that again? I said, meanwhile, the colors are gorgeous. Yes. Absolutely. Mm. That way it Well, we can say, no, I think this is great. I'm impressed how you, go ahead, sorry. I was going to say, we can certainly look at that in grayscale and, and see, you know, what it look, looks like. Because I think it's, I, I'm not mistaken that it's really easy to just save one in grayscale, right? Just you know, and I mean, you don't even, I don't even think you need to, you know, share it with us, but just make sure that you and your staff take a look at it and just, you know, make sure it will also work if you ever need to do it in black and white. Yes, unfortunately, I can't do it for you now because I have a PDF file, but in Word, I know you can easily show it. Oh, absolutely. No, you don't need to do it for us yeah, now. Yeah, we can do that. Okay. But yeah, thank you for getting that done so quickly. That's impressive. Canva is great. They have such a selection of um, images and templates and things to follow. It's just really easy to work with. You can set up your palette of colors and then it gives you those colors for everything you do. You choose the ones from that palette, you choose your font, you choose your image. It's, it's so easy to work with. Great. Um, so I, I think, John, I didn't follow the rules right, and I apologize. But um, we, we've had our discussion. But any chance, um, did, I, did we do a motion to approve the logo? Or, or, or could I get a motion to approve the logo and tagline for the library? I'll move. I second. Okay, thank, thank you everyone. Um, and is there any additional discussion? Yeah, I have a question and that is uh, the logo in and of itself, you know, it, it, it is attractive. The question I have is how do you make this a part of everything that we do. So assume that when we come on to the website for Ledger Public Library, that all we're going to see is this logo with the tagline. What are you gonna do after that? How are you going to uh, draw people in uh, to this particular um, logo so that one, they embrace it, and they also use it to uh, find services, uh, to be able to contact, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I've, and I'm just asking, have you thought about that? Well, because it's a new logo, obviously it's going to take a while for people to identify it with the library. But I think the more we use it, the more it will become automatic. At least I hope it will become automatic. Um, we will be changing the header on our web, on our homepage, on our event calendar. Um, any flyers that we do will have some version of the logo on it somewhere. And and the idea is the more people see it, the hope is that they will come to identify it with the library just like with our old logo so well 
I, I don't know that I ever identified with the old logo and, and the concurrent logo in the library. My, I guess my point though is that yes, you can, you can use this over and over again and people can get used to it. The question I have is, I think that this logo electronically or digitally should be interactive. Ah, links and I think that, and, and, uh, huh? Links to those words at the bottom, you mean like connect? Well, it, it could be that, it could be the, it could be all of the services that you say these leaves are supposed to represent. I mean, I would say that the average person doesn't know anything about learn, discover, create and connect if you don't know the vision. So how do you make this real to your patrons other than another picture? Because that's really, to me, since we're digital, why aren't we escalating uh, and proliferating our digital footprint through this introduction of a, a logo? Have this you given that, like that idea of or is this just a thing? And if it's just a thing, I don't really care about the logo and you can go ahead and it's fine, it's attractive. However, everything we do should have a purpose that promotes our organization. I think part of the problem before, and this is one of the things that was addressed in the strategic plan, was that we seem to have multiple logos. You know, Gales Ferry had something, Bill Library had something, then there was Ledger Public Libraries, plural or singular, and all the templates for events were completely different and there was just so much different stuff. So one of the things was to just get everything under one umbrella because one of the things we heard a lot was that people were saying, oh, I knew about that, but I didn't know it was the library. So we want to make sure everything's tied back to sort of one look so that it's all, and it sort of goes with the whole one cohesive library thing. And, and it's going to be consistency. And I mean, I like the idea of, you know, linking things through here and making it more interactive. I do think we need to balance launching it, you know, because you, you, you get criticism on why'd you spend money doing this, even though there was no money spent. But um, I, I, I do think that part of the strategic plan is just a lot of consistency with the logo, really getting the vision out there, you know, making sure it's just part of what the library is. Um, and really making sure that people recognize the all the different things the library do and then make sure it sort of comes back to one visual look so that it's always linked in people's minds with the library. Rebecca, if I look at this logo the way it is, I don't know anything about the library except for it is a tree and it has learn, discover, create, connect. It has no reference to me. There's no substance to it other than the visual. And I understand. If you use this visual for everything, then people recognize it. But we need to get beyond just that. This is an opportunity for us to look at how we launch this into something that is purposeful and meaningful to the promotion of the organization. I, I Absolutely. love Absolutely, and I mean, I think getting our vision out there in everything we do is huge. I love the idea of making it interactive but there were only certain circumstances where that could be done. Um, something like our webpage, we could create links to each of the words in the tagline. Maybe we could create links to the leaves, I'm not sure. Um, we have to work on that. Fly out with a service on it. Yeah, but it would, it would only work on like the website. For example, it would only work on a digital medium. It wouldn't work on everything. Do you know what I'm saying? I know. But do you know what I'm saying? If you're not, if you're, all you're doing is making a visual, mm -hmm. right? Does this visual tell me anything other than those four words? Would the average person know that that is in our vision? So if you saw it on our website and you clicked on learn and you got a pop-up that told you what you could learn at the library or a pop-up on the discover that gave some of the things that you could discover, create might tell you 
some of the programs that would help you make something. Is, is that what your vision is? Is that what, what no. you're thinking? I, that is one thing that can happen from a digital, from the, from the web page. At the same time, we have all kinds of programs. So tell me, when you look at Create, mm -hmm. okay, what are the programs and services that we provide that fall under Create? All of the maker activities. Well, that's one, that's one thing, okay? Okay. So what I'm saying is, what should happen is that we should really be thinking about what are our services and our programs that would fall, let's say, under each of those four things. Mm -hmm. So that when a person comes to the front desk and they say, I'm interested in the connect phase of the library, we have, we can articulate a position about what you can do and find under connect. Okay. Or if I'm on the web page and I hit connect, what I'm going to find is, you know, maybe all of the all of the uh, um, online connections mm -hmm. for Hoopla, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Right. right. Okay. But yep. all I'm saying is that if you're not thinking about how you can promote this in both analog and digital, then all this is is a visual. And it doesn't take us, it doesn't give us as much of an advantage and it's not as productive as it could be. This is Beth, I, I, I like that idea of, of clicking on things. And I also think that only digital wise, um, you can also have a hover over um, text where um, if you hover over the word learn, what is our strategic term for that? So if you're looking at these being um, learn, discover, create, connect, things that um, are from the strategic plan, then how do we, how we just define learn, right? So maybe there's a hover over and there's text that, that shows what learn means um, in the library context. And this logo would own, would be used in a context. It wouldn't just be there by itself. That's all you're seeing. This gives a familiar face, but you've got something else on that page or on that website or around it in some way, visually at the same time, usually, unless this is a business card, that you're, that's going to lead you into some of these other things. It's just not going to all be all by itself. You don't have it doesn't have to stand on its own in that sense. And and let's remember, like the two logos we're looking at right now don't say Ledger Public Library, but the majority of them do. And and there's a reason why, obviously, some would and some wouldn't. But right, right. right. You know, most of them are going to be more of this. Does all? The first one and, and this one is up now. Right. And I do think, I mean, there are things we can do eventually too with it, but at the same time, getting it started is the first step, obviously. So making it too complicated with anything that's going to require, you know, changing the, the website or anything like that, maybe that becomes a future thing that we work on, but we do need to start getting it onto materials and you know, onto letterhead, onto business cards, onto name tags. If if you know people start having name tags more, just getting it onto library related things. So I think in know, the it, in the beginning, um, no matter which one you pick, it should include the words legend public library. After a year or two, when people get used to that, you probably could take that out and just have the four w words and not the uh, public library. So it's kind of neater, not as... The, the, one, the one that does not have legend public libraries, I, I wanted it without legend public library because, for example, on the letterhead, I wanted legend public library to be larger and stand out separately. 
So I have the tree and the tagline separate and then Legend Public Library yeah. off on its own. Does that make sense? I like that. I like that. But that looks more like letterhead. Uh, for it is something. letterhead. It is right. letterhead. But I mean, if you're using a, a flyer for something else, well, yep. I think the Legend Public Library should be on that at least in the very beginning. Exactly. After a while, when you know people get used to it, you could take it out. Exactly. Just reduce the size of it. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. And another point on the letterhead sheet: um, the image in the background on the second example is pretty, but I've almost always found if you have something you're printing on a sheet that has this ghostly image behind it, it just makes it hard to read. And, and I can't think of many times when you would want to have that, or if it's going to be so faint it doesn't interfere with the reading, then you don't see it anyway. Right. But just with the letterhead without that, I really like. It was just mm -hmm. an idea trying because I could. <laughs> 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 Any additional discussion? Okay. Um, <laughs> sorry, I don't know who was talking. Go ahead. Oh, that was that was Beth. I like the color, whatever the um, the color that you're using for the font. I like it. Kind of like a teal blue. That's really nice. So, all right. So we we have a motion and a second. Um, all in favor of the logo as discussed and. Um, say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Okay, so so moved. Gail, thank you for the work on that, and um, you know, and we and we and Ralph, your comments are very well taken, and we can definitely continue with it and see what we can do to. To elaborate and make it even more purposeful. So thank you. Um, any other things that we haven't covered before I ask for a motion to adjourn? All right. Um, our next meeting is June 15th, um, probably online. And could I get a motion and a second to adjourn the meeting? So moved. I made the other ones. I'm not making this one. Yeah, I was going to say, come on, someone jump in. This is the easy one, you know. <laughs> All right, Carol moved. Can I get a second? Sure, I'll second. All right, thanks, Ellen. All right, well, so our next meeting's on the 15th, and I hope everyone stays well between now and then. And it's good to see you guys. Good okay. night. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.